So today we're going to do something a little bit different. I have a different recording software that I'm using and I'm going to try my microphone uh, while I'm driving at the same time. So as you're seeing this on the screen, I'm actually doing it live. Normally I'll edit my video and then I'll do my speaking after that and I'll edit it down just because if I cough or sneeze or something then it won't be in the video but I'm going to try this today and just see how it works. I mean obviously I'll still edit the sound in case I sneeze or cough to cut it out and we'll kind of go from there but I want to try doing it live and I have a new software recording program and it allows me to record in 3440 by 1440. So we're going to try that out today too. And just see how that goes. And it's called, oh, just so you know, it's called DaVinci Resolve. And they have a free version. So I'm going to try that one out and see. Because using uh, Photoshop or using Adobe Premiere, it doesn't. Uh, it only allows you to do 2560 by 1440 and it's 50 frames, the version that I have. Now they have newer versions that you can record higher resolutions, but I don't have the money to pay for those. So I'm just going to use this one and see if it works. So today we're going to do a quick race just to see how this goes. And I'm going to do the cup series and I'm going to be Chase Elliott. And let's go ahead and pick a paint scheme for him. I like that one. That one's pretty cool. We'll take that one. Uh, we're going to do our quick race settings. Let's look at our settings and see where they are. I'm going to do 103%, 25% race. I'm going to do multi stage. It's going to be a pretty decently long race. 25% in the Cup Series, I think, is about a 45 minute race. So I'll probably edit it down just uh, once we get done, just so it's not so long. But that lo all looks pretty good. Let me go back here. Let's make sure that looks okay. That looks okay too. And we'll save our changes. And we will go to the racetrack. And we'll... We didn't qualify too well. There's something about Atlanta when you qualify. The track is really slick. So I didn't get a good qualifying, but that's okay. The race should go pretty good. So let's go ahead and get started. So you can see Eric Jones has been dominant this weekend. Austin Dillon's a little bit slow. Clint Boyer failed inspection. I wonder if he knew anything about that. Well, let's get started here and see how we do. Got Landing Castle up there in front of us. Been running the iRacing Pro Invitational races. Doing pretty good, too, from what I saw. Now, we're running this one, I believe, at 103%. So, almost full strength. See if I can... Oh, I couldn't get past McMurray right there. Oh, we're almost in the wall. Oh, boy. This thing is slick. I'm gonna have to wait a couple laps for it to come in. Or maybe not. Man, this thing is a handful on the high side. But that's Atlanta. Atlanta's a high handful on the high side. Oh, trying to sneak underneath right there. Sneak underneath on the bottom. See if I can go by a few of these guys. There we go. I think the tires are starting to come in a little bit now. And again, as always, if there's parts in here that are not that exciting, 
then I'll just cut them out. But since I'm doing it a little bit differently, I'm doing it live right now. So if there's parts in here that I go three or four laps and I don't pass anybody, then I'll just cut that part out. We'll see. I'll see how long the video is going to be. Then I'll make my decision from there. But NASCAR Heat 4 typically doesn't get that many views. Um, so I might just leave the whole thing. And if you want to skip to the last few laps, obviously you can do that. But I might just leave it the way it is. I don't know. I don't do these longer races very often. But I think it's. I don't think it's the length of the video. I think it's the game itself. People I just don't think are that interested in NASCAR Heat 4. Now iRacing um, is a different story. They have been doing a ton of updates recently. Just because of all the uh, pro invitational races that they're doing with the real drivers. So but it's a good thing for us as uh consumers of the service because not only are they doing all those races and getting all that exposure, that means they have to update the service more often so that everything looks decent on national TV or on cable TV so that's a good thing for us at the end of the day because once this is over once the pro invitational stuff is over and it goes back to you know, it's not on TV anymore. It's just the people who subscribe to the service using it. I mean, obviously the drivers use it sometimes, but not in this format. They're not on there on NBCSN or Fox Sports 1 playing this. So once all of that goes away, once the COVID thing is over, the virus, and NASCAR starts up again, iRacing is still going to have all those updates that they've been doing. I mean, I've seen so many hot patches and fixes day after day after day. And I think there's another one today. They've had so many of them. Let's see where we are here. So the leader's eight seconds ahead of us. Tires are looking okay. Got enough fuel. There's Ryan Newman up ahead of us. Yeah, I always I forgot how hard it was to talk and drive at the same time. I can barely walk and chew gum at the same time. Much less do this. I don't know how the heck they do it. Having a spotter in their ear. Having to talk to the crew chief. And they're going 200 miles an hour. Inches away from each other. And you hear someone like Kyle Busch. That's why Kyle Busch is so good. He'll run around Dover, or it, you know, a difficult track like that, and just just like he's walking around the track, and he'll give the crew chief so much information. It's insane, but yet he's, you know, he's going so fast, but he's just able to give that information like it's nothing, like uh, Jimmy Broadbent. And congratulations to him for everything he's doing, doing some real racing building up his subscribers. I've been watching him and been subscribed to him since he had 12,000 subs. Now he's got over 300,000, I believe. But that guy, how he talks and goes around the Nordschleife or any track is insane, especially with other cars on the track and he's actively racing and he talks and he doesn't even flinch. That's I'm sure it just takes a ton of practice to be able to do that. But for me, my senses right now are so focused on talking that it's hard for my brain to break away from that and go to the racing. Normally, I just concentrate on the racing and I'm like, okay, you know, we're racing. But when you throw the talking piece in there too, oh man, it adds another layer. So I really respect people who can do that consistently. Like Jimmy Johnson. Let's see if we can get by Jimmy Johnson here real quick. There's Alex Bowman up in front of him. Whoa! Oh man, we 
got tight right there. Hit the white line or the yellow line. Regroup. Time to regroup. And then I gotta play with mic levels. How far is the mic from my face? Am I being too loud? It's all a work in progress. I will probably end up getting a webcam at some point and doing some live streaming. Yeah. Have lots of the friends online that want to see me live stream. I don't know that I want to see my face on live stream. But why others do, I have no idea. But I might try it out. We'll see how it goes. I mean, that would be even more difficult. Because now people are, are in the chat. You know, chatting in the chat. Which is what people do. Never mind. So then you got to watch the chat. you got to play the game. you got to interact with people. Because if you're not interacting, then people are going to leave. All right, four laps remaining in this stage. I think I'm probably just going to keep it the way it is here and not edit it out because it takes so long to edit the video. I guess if you're not wanting to watch the, uh, you want to get to the end of the stage, you can fast forward it, of course. But I just wanted to try something different, see if it would uh, go over decently. But I found when I first started making videos, if you go back to my NASCAR 2003 videos, they were like an hour long, and maybe it's just the game, too. It's an older game. Just didn't really get very many views. People didn't want to watch that. So I cut the footage down. But every time I put up an iRacing video, something like that, it gets easily three times more views than the NASCAR Heat ones. But I would think iRacing would be even more difficult to talk and play at the same time because, you know, it is more of a sim, iRacing is. So it takes even more concentration than this does to be able to play that well. Especially if you're in a live race, that's got to be really difficult. One more lap to go in the stage. Oh, happy Harvick. Let's go talk to him. Oh, we're going to go underneath Harvick right there. All right, we got around him. Top 10 in the first stage. We did pretty good. All right, so it don't look like anybody is pitting, and we're not going to pit either. We're going to go ahead and advance to the next stage in the process stage two top ten here we go Clear low, I think. Yep, clear low. Got Brad K above us here. Here we go. Let's see if we can get around Brad and get up there. And Atlanta, I love Atlanta. It's one of my favorite tracks, but it can also be pretty tough, obviously. Choose tires up. You'll know that's one thing I really like about this game. You'll notice right there with Suarez. The game thought, okay, he might go to the inside, so I'm going to give him that room so we don't crash. You know, the game is proactive when it comes to the AI and not wanting to crash. 
So it's going to give you some extra leeway. And I, I like that. I know real racing isn't like that. But I like the leeway that you get with this. If you do make a mistake, you're not going to take out half the field. Oh, man. See, this is me learning to talk and drive at the same time, learning under fire. So I've been hit that yellow line 14 times. Uh, I don't know how many, I was just guessing. <laughs> Could have been 24 for all I know. But I hope everyone's doing well during these weird times. I've never seen anything like it. I've been around since the late 70s, so that tells you my age. And yes, I still like playing video games. Who doesn't? But I've never seen nothing like this before. And I don't know when it's going to end. What it's going to look like. Definitely feel for anybody who's had complications or, or passed away from the virus. I'm not even able to see my family. Very much. Just because we're all quarantined and sometimes people live in different places but so we're not able to really get out and see each other because oh man because Arizona's on a lockdown right now I mean you can still go do things but you got to be careful with what you do See if we can get by Hamlin here. Nope, hit the yellow line again. Who's that behind us? Kurt Bush? I think that's Kurt Bush. Alright, we'll try the outside then. Oh, and it is definitely loose. This Kurt Bush. Now let's give him a little nudge, get him up there. Maybe they'll wreck each other. Let's see if we can get back underneath him here. There we go. Thanks, Kurt. Kurt helped us out there. Now we are in fourth. Still got a good amount of fuel left. You can see the tires going down 50% on the right rear 65 on the right front so obviously the right rear is working a lot harder which means the car is loose because the back end wants to keep sliding out so the right rear has to work twice as hard to keep it from doing that but I'd rather have a looser race car than a tighter one now obviously you don't want to have it too loose that you spin out but if the car is tight, there's not much you can do about that except back up back up your corner. Let off earlier. I guess there's a good balance there. Alright, now Kurt Bush is still ahead of us. He's in third. I'll show you what I mean by back up the corner right here. I'm gonna lift right now. Normally I would have lifted later. But if you lift earlier, the car's not going so fast into the corner. It'll set itself down and rotate better. Now I'm going to go into the corner further like that and get back in the gas sooner like that and just ride it through there. But now that's going to eat your tires up a whole lot more than backing up your corner and getting in there easy. So when you talk about drivers saving tires and even saving fuel, that's what they're doing. They're backing up their corner. If they're on a road course, then they're short shifting. They're not letting the RPMs get up to 8,000 RPMs before they shift. They might shift at 6,000. It saves on that little bit of fuel. If you think about a track like Watkins Glen with all the turns it has or Sonoma, if you're short shifting in every turn, every lap, I mean, that's saving you a good amount of fuel. Even though it's only 
a few drops of fuel, I'm, I'm guessing. But a few drops of fuel per corner, per lap, is going to save you, might save you a gallon of fuel. And a gallon of fuel is huge. And Kyle Larson's car is huge. He's old McDonald's today. Good thing we're in these cars. We'd have to go through the drive-thru to get to the McDonald's. Can't go inside. Oh, I got that yellow line again. All right, five to go in the stage. I'm guessing that's Kyle Busch up front. Just taking a wild guess here. Oh no, Eric Jones. Wow, look at Eric Jones go. Oh, that's right. In the beginning, it said he had a fast car today, and obviously he does. So look at him go. Come on, Larson, help me out. Let's get up there. Four laps to go in the stage. Give Larson a little shot right there. Y'all let me know if you uh if you like the way I'm doing the video here. Just talking as I go. I don't know why anybody would want to listen to me talk for 45 minutes. But here we go. Maybe it keeps people engaged too. But I'll be honest with you, editing the videos and stuff does take a while. But I've gotten a lot better at it, obviously, since I've been doing it. But I wanted to try this way of doing it, because every time I see someone streaming, you know, and they're on Twitch playing iRacing, they're talking at the same time, and they're streaming, and they got people in there watching, so... I'm like, what's, what's the difference? I mean, but with this, you're going to watch the video and I'm not going to be there to talk to you live. But, like I said, if I get a webcam, then I'll consider doing it. We'll see. Of course, I work. I'm not working at the moment. But someone tested positive at my work. And they did the right thing and shut it down. Cleaned the site up. So that was a good thing and offered us two weeks off with pay if we wanted it. And I thought that was really nice of the company to do that. They could have just said, nope, you're coming back to work. But uh, they didn't. Because Arizona's a right to work state. So they can pretty much do whatever they want. Top. Five finish in that stage. We got third place. I don't know if we got enough for Eric Jones today, but we'll find out. Looks like everyone is going to pit. Oh, man, I would hope. I'm going to take one can of fuel. I would hope that they're getting four tires. I'm going to turn the tape up a little bit so it get a little more downforce. And I'm going to go with that. So it looks like they did take four tires because I ended up losing two spots. If I had took four tires and everyone else took two, I'd be further down the list. Or if I took two tires and everyone else took four, then I'd be I'd be on, in the front right now. So it looks like they all took four tires also. Sometimes it's hard to gauge that. And then, because I want it to be fair, and sometimes I'll take two or four tires and find out they took two. And I'm like, well, now I'm going to blow the field away. That's not cool. Got one now. Oh, and we're loose again on these new tires. Right, and Fugano to the inside. But we're not going to give it to him. Well, he's going to take it anyway. 
See how the car slides around? Oh man, that was close. So we're going to lose some spots here until the tires get warmed up. I'm trying my best to hang on to it here and talk at the same time. <laughs> we know how difficult that is. Get a couple of laps on the tires. I think they'll be okay. That's probably one of the hardest things for game developers to do is, is AI. Oh, Harvick's going to go underneath us. Dang it. Get back down in that hole so that Jimmy Johnson doesn't go underneath us too. But now I got to see if I can get back up there. Because unfortunately, the further away they get, uh, that's going to be harder for me to catch them and win the race. As you can see what a big lead Eric Jones has already in just a few laps. Still a little bit loose, but I can stay in the gas right now. So that's a good thing. I couldn't stay in the gas right there, though. Still wanted to spin out on me. All right, let's look at our leaderboard and see who's what. So they're a second ahead of us right now. Let's see if we're catching them at all. Well, they're racing each other. They're about three wide, so that should help us a little bit. Because they're just going to continue to race each other. But I'm not racing anybody, so I can just go full blast. So you can see right there we caught up just a little bit. Caught Logano by another tenth right there. Car's feeling a little better now as I almost slide out of control, but trust me, it feels a little better. Get up next to the wall here, slide it down to the inside. Half a second. We caught up. We caught up a pretty good amount on Logano. You got Truex up there. Looks like Denny Hamlin, and Kyle Busch. Let's see if we can continue to catch them because we still got quite a few laps to go. 28 laps to go. There's Logano. Give Joey a little shot right there. I don't know if we're going to be able to catch those leaders, though. There's Logano. We're going to give him another little shot right there. Move him up the track a little bit. See if we can go underneath. Truex is in front of us. Oh, we hit the yellow line. There's the candy man. Look at him up there. Even Kyle Bush has been making huge improvements on our racing. Now you know Kyle Bush. He is not the one. 
to lay over in a competitive environment and say, you know what, it's just fun, I know that, just going to have fun, no. It starts out being fun, and then it's, oh, wait a minute, they're taking this seriously. And then his competitiveness gets going, and he's like, you know what, I want to win one of these. Um, so he's been doing a lot of, oh, right in between them. He's been doing a good amount of racing in the evenings, too. He'll do some, uh, some street stocks, and he'll run some races. I'll see him on iRacing. So he's he's practicing because he wants to win. None of the guys that are racing, whether it be Xfinity, Trucks, or Cup, none of them got there because they were just like, oh, it's cool, I'm happy to be here. They got there because they have, well, some of them have money, let's be honest, but they have that fire, that competition. They want to be the best. They want to win. And when you put them in a competitive environment, that's what's going to happen. And that's what that's what happened with Bubba in the Pro Invitational. He wanted to win, and he got crashed, and he, you know, a lot of people feels like he got crashed on purpose, and he wasn't happy about it. I know if I'm just doing a regular race, you know, and I've spent an hour practicing, and I go in there and I get wrecked on lap four, I'm going to be mad. I just feel like I wasted my time. Especially when you get wrecked on purpose. But one thing I really like that Bubba did, this is Thursday now, but last night he was racing, and it was on... Fox Sports 1. It was a dirt race. And Jeff Gordon was doing his thing commentating. Clint Boyer was there doing his thing commentating. And I thought Bubba did a really good job. You know, that Clint Boyer will rib him a little bit, have some fun. But I thought that Bubba Wallace took it really well and had a lot of fun on the broadcast. Um, even made a little bit of fun of himself. I think he realized after Blue Emu was like, we're not happy that you did that, that you just quit that race. Um, I think he realized, man, maybe I shouldn't do that because someone's always watching. Especially when there's a million people watching. I can guarantee you some of those million people are potential sponsors. And when you rage quit a race, then it turns into, well, he has the... He has shown us that he has the ability to rage quit. Will he do that in real life? And then it turns into, do we really want to sponsor this person? Or do we want to go sponsor Landon Castle because, you know, he'll get crashed. But he's like, ah, it's just for fun. And he's very PR about it. He's very PC about it. Politically correct. And if I'm a sponsor, that's who I'm going to go with because I know... When I'm putting down big money, that he's not going to blast. He's not going to make himself look like a fool on TV. But yeah, someone's always watching, especially when there's a million people watching. So even if you're not happy and things didn't go your way, you got to say, you know, it wasn't our night tonight. You know, I'm sorry, I apologize to Blue Emu. I thought we'd be on here longer, but it didn't work out that way. We'll come back and we'll do it next time. And that would have been perfectly fine. And people would have said, man, Bubba handled himself really well, even though he got crashed on purpose. He did really well. That's the kind of guy we want sponsors. That's the kind of guy we want in our race car. But, you know, still learning, still honing his craft, just like many young racers are. He'll be fine. As long as he can say, you know what, at least I made that mistake on there and not in real life. And I just posted my best lap ever. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, man. Oh, McFlurry. Well, this ought to be interesting. And, oh, we 
got to get around these lap cars or the leaders are gone. I got to go. Kurt, see you, buddy. See you soon. I'll write you a postcard. Cody Ware, got to go around him. They do get through the traffic pretty decently, though. I do like that. They seem to get through there pretty darn good. I have no idea how big a file size this video is going to be. I have no idea. I mean, obviously, I have a pretty big hard drive. But I have no idea what size this thing is going to be and how long it's going to take to upload it. That's the biggest reason I like cutting the footage down, because then it doesn't take hours to upload. But that DaVinci Resolve is pretty good for upload speeds for encoding and, and well the upload speed is more determined by the server but it's pretty good at downloading I mean encoding the product because it uses your CPU and GPU you can see at the top left I have CPU and GPU usage and uh, they fluctuate when it's encoding a video so the CPU gets used and the GPU I have a 1920X CPU and a 1070 video card. Obviously, I'd like to get a 1080 at some point, but I'm just happy to have anything at this point right now. There's Eric Jones. There's our buddy. Let's we'll see how this lap traffic is going to do. And that's another reason I run shorter races. Because now he's going to hit the slap traffic and slow down. Like that right there. And he's going to stay behind that car. Now I could pass him if I wanted to right there. But I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and see if he gets around that lap traffic first. So that's part of the reason I do shorter races. But see like right there, he should have went under that car. But he didn't. See, the AI just doesn't have that awareness. Hey, there's Maddie D. Oh, shoot. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Now we got a crash. And I'm crashed. Oh, boy. And there's no yellow. <laughs> Doggone it. That's another reason that we do shorter races. That lap traffic. The AI doesn't always make the best decisions and sometimes I don't either. Well, I would have won the race, but I would have only won it because of the lap traffic, to be honest with you. Front end's a little tore up, as you can see. But we're still moving along. BJ McLeod. There he is. Now see the AI car right there. They would have just got up behind him and stayed there. But but I didn't do that. And we'll still pretty darn fast for being crashed. I think I have, I don't, might have the damage set on like moderate, so even if you crash your car, you're still pretty fast. I thought the yellow would have come out for sure right there. Unless I somehow have yellows turned off, I don't think I do, but. See, and Eric, because of the AI, he's only two seconds ahead of me. That's, like I said, that's the big reason I do short races is so and do stage races. So the last, you know, stage is like 10 laps, and you don't have uh, AI cars that get in the way of the leader and slow him down. I don't want to win because the AI got in the way and slowed the car down. I know sometimes that happens in real life. 
but on here the AI is particularly um, non-aware. Hey, and there's Bubba. The AI is very unaware of their surroundings, and they they just don't use it to their advantage. Matty D. Sorry, Matt. Didn't mean to wreck you there, Bubba. Man, I love Matty D. As Junior would say, deep in a debt toll. I hope he gets him a win this year. I really do. I hope he gets the Wood Brothers their 100th win. That would be so fitting to get them their 100th win with him in the car. That'd be awesome. So hopefully we go back racing at some point this year. They've got it set right now for May 3rd. I don't know if that's going to happen. They said the height of the coronavirus hasn't even hit yet. So I don't know what's going on. I'm just happy to have a place to live. People that care about me. Have food to eat. And have a job. Because a lot of people don't right now. And I feel for those individuals. And there's, you know, obviously all the schools are closed and kids are not in school right now. A lot of kids rely on school to get their food because some parents aren't able to afford it. And it's sad, but it's true. And unfortunately, uh, with parents being home not working, not knowing if they're going to be able to pay their bills and kids being home all the time too um, that can make the home environment really uh, really frustrating so I'm, I'm hopeful that all those individuals are, are taking that extra deep breath and showing some patience right now as they try to get things figured out but one lap to go on here enough of me babbling like a goober one lap to go we're still pretty fast we almost caught Eric Jones anyway with the lap traffic we're gonna come home in second appreciate everybody watching the stream I don't know why there wasn't a yellow there but I don't know let me know if you like this way of doing it it's probably way too long of a video but let me know if you like this way of doing it or what you think about it and maybe I'll start on Sundays. Maybe I'll do a 25 or a 50% race and just upload the whole thing. Maybe once a week or twice a month. And we'll see. So talk to you again soon. And everybody stay safe out there.